But while some reach that supermodel status, most struggle to make ends meet in the industry. For more on that, I'm joined by Matt Wilson from Miami. Matt is a former model and actor. Thank you for joining us. You're welcome. So as we know, just a small percentage of models actually make it into this millionaire's club. So what does real life actually look like for most models? Well, uh, you arrive to a big city and you hustle to get any kind of waiting job or swim coach or whatever you can do to survive while you go to auditions that are like cattle calls. There's 75 to several hundred guys that are all waiting for a minimal amount of spots. Now, a lot of people see the fairy tale of, oh, this person got spotted in the mall, and now all of a sudden they're, they're super famous. But break down the typical process for becoming a professional model and some of the costs involved. So initially, if you find an agency that believes in you, you shouldn't model unless an agency believes in you. But if they do, they'll usually provide you with some photographers that will do TFP. Make sure that when you do that, you fill out paperwork to make sure that you protect yourself and the images aren't used for a herpes ad or something. You want to make sure that you're smart when you do that. But then after you get your, your initial shots, then you'll be sent out for jobs. And after you're sent out for jobs, once you book a mainstream job or a paying job, then you start getting sent out for more and more and more. Now, a lot of and while you're, sorry. Sure. So a lot of models, when it comes to being sent off on shoots and things, a lot of people don't understand that some of those costs they're actually responsible for. So what surprised you most about the process and the cost involved when you were first getting into the business versus when you became more established? Well, initially, you, you pay for um, travel. You pay for photographers sometimes. You pay for food, you pay for your living, and uh, it's really paycheck to paycheck, and a lot of times you'll try to bunk up with several other young models and, uh, you know, or depend on your parents to survive. Now, obviously, we're in the middle of Men's Fashion Week. What are some of the challenges that men in particular are facing in the industry? It depends on where you're modeling, I think. Um, you know, Miami, you can be a little more muscular. Uh, L.A., you need to be um, kind of that pretty Hollywood skinny muscle. And if you're in New York, maybe you're more an androgynous look and uh, you need to be super, super lean. But I think measurements are the most important thing. Uh, I remember eating apples and drinking lemon water uh, just to stay in shape. And you're running, running, running because you need to maintain a 32-inch waist or smaller. You need to maintain a 34-inch inseam. You need to maintain a 15 and a half inch neck and as you can see I have now a 17 and a half inch neck and it so it was very difficult to reduce things that I had little control over. And there has been a lot of blowback about sort of the weight of models, the size of models, seeing more diversity on the runways. Have you seen any positive changes to the industry addressing things like that and things like pay inequality between male and female models? I do. You know, the older I get, the more that I see that they don't choose the blonde as much. They ended up choosing someone that's of a ethnic background or that has a very uh, unique look that could be maybe multiracial. Um, I think they're definitely trying to represent a lot more people. And how has social media changed the definition of modeling? Obviously, we see people popping up, becoming sort of Insta models. How has that changed the industry? You know, it's frustrating because I see my generation and the generation after me, they, uh, it's a very look at me, look at me, selfie generation. Um, and they will go to extremes, show a lot of skin and kind of compromise the integrity, I think, of the initial industry to get that extra like or to get more followers. And so they push the envelope really far and then models that maybe come from a more conservative background or, or want to have uh, a little bit of privacy kept to themselves, you know, feel a lot of pressure to show more and more and more. And just quickly, do you have any financial advice or tips for newcomers to the industry that you wish someone would have given you at the start of your career? I think in the end, it just doesn't matter. Uh, find a job that you love and the affirmation that you receive from modeling, it, it's it's extraordinary. It's fun to walk a runway. It's exciting. But at the end of the day, you know, if it's filling a void that maybe you should have gotten from your foundational youth, uh, then it can be a little bit toxic. And so I think if someone had given me advice, it would be do what you love and then, and then stay connected to an agency and 
go out for castings and enjoy the ride instead of worry about the paycheck to paycheck. All right, thank you so much. Matt Wilson there, former model and actor.